many things from my son to him. Like, Mom, Jara, I'm leave going now. Where's Dad? Or sometimes he is asking, Why are you hungry? What is this? These are questions that come from his level of understanding. And I try to give him my best answer. As you know, these questions are endlessly repeated. And I give him answers over and over again. <coughs> what question did you ask <coughs> yourself today? What question did you ask to God today? One night, Paul and Silas were put in prison. And suddenly, there was a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundations and all the doors immediately flew open and, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The scripture testifies that Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the, and the other prisoners were listening. But even though the scripture shows that there was an earthquake so, uh, so severe, that the prison was shaken and all the doors opened. Even the chains of every prisoner fell off. The scripture isn't talking about other prisoners. If all the doors opened so that all prisoners there could escape because of the earthquake, it would be absolute chaos with people who were trying to escape from the jail. <coughs> However, Though the scripture is silent about other people there, the scripture tells that the door which were Paul's, uh, Paul and Silas was opened. This is just like what happened in Acts 12. It was the night before Peter was to be uh, placed on trial in Jerusalem. Peter had the door of the prison open for him. The prison guard was awakened from deep sleep when the earth was shaken, doors opened and the chains fell off. And he was going to kill himself when, he, when as he saw the door opened where Paul and Silas were being held. He simply thought that Paul and Silas, who were asked, asked to be kept in jail with an airtight guard, ran away already. And just then, there was some voice from inside of the dark room. Stop, don't kill yourself. We are all here. So we can see that what the jailer did at that moment in verse 29. Let's look at verse 29. The jailer called for light and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. The jailer took light and held them in his hands and ran into the room. He must have wanted to make sure whether the sound he had heard was real or an auditory hallucination. But amazingly, there were Paul and Silas sitting in the cell even though the chains had fallen off. It would have have a, uh, it would have been so difficult for a jailer to understand. Paul and Silas are still sitting there. According to Tini, the jailer ran into the room, trembling, and he fell down before them. He was overwhelmed by their charisma. Because even though they could run away from the jail, but they didn't. They were sitting honorably. He just couldn't help falling down, being captured by some power. Falling down is uh, proskritos in Greek, and it means that uh, slumped forward unconsciously with sudden amaze or embarrassed. A jailer is a professional man whose job was to keep prisoners. He knows that prisoners always try to escape whenever there is chains. But Paul and Silas were sitting in the cell, even though it was a really great time to escape. So the jailer just fell down because, because he was overwhelmed by them. In verse 30, 
Then he brought them, brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? After a while, he calmed himself down and brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? At this point, sir is uh, curious in Greek and it means Lord. It's when we say Lord to our God. So if you call curious to man, it's the most honorary term. And he kept asking, what must I do to be saved? Let's rethink this situation. You and I pretended to uh, be this jailer. I'm a jailer working at a jail in Philippines. Today, I was ordered by city officials that I have to make sure they don't escape. The officials caught them and put them to prison because Paul and Silas were spread all wrong and ridiculous customs. So they needed to be kept by a tough guard. So I put them into the, into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. During the night, I had fallen asleep near their cell. Suddenly, I hear the earth shaking and doors open. I couldn't see in front of me because of darkness, but I was so sure that the door was open wide. It meant that the prisoners who were ordered to be kept tightly by officials already ran away. At the moment, there was only one choice, killing myself. A jailer who lost on a prisoner has to be killed after extreme torture. And it's, a, it's a, such a dishonorable thing for a jailer. I was about to kill myself with a sword. And someone shouted out <coughs> urgently, stop. Don't kill yourself. We are all here. That voice was surely Paul's, which I heard when I put him into the room this afternoon. But it's impossible. I've never imagined that a prisoner didn't escape, despite the fact the door is open wide. That's why I try to check whether it's Paul or an auditory hallucination. But what happened to me? What happened here? There are Paul and Silas sitting there honorably while the chains fall off from their feet. I was just overwhelmed by them, by their charisma, and relaxed because there is no reason to kill myself anymore. So I just fell down in front of them, and I called Lord to them, because they saved my life. Okay then, if you were a prisoner, I mean, you don't have to worry about a punishment being killed. So as a result, they became your savior. <coughs> what would you say you would ask first? If I were him, I would say, thank you, because they didn't run away and stop me from being killed. Or I would ask, ask with curious mind that how or why they didn't escape in spite of this situation. Or I would ask how those miraculous things were happened, or I might need to apologize that I had treated them badly when I put them into a jail. So I would beg for forgiveness of my rudeness. I assume that you are not that different from me because it would be a common reaction for this situation. But this jailer was different. He asked like this, what must I do to be saved? about salvation. He didn't say he was grateful for them for stopping him 
from killing himself. He didn't ask why they didn't run away. He didn't apologize for his behavior. He asked about salvation. What does it mean? It means that the jailer was living with this thought. How? What should I do to be saved? On daily basis. This man knew that there is something spiritual and eternal life beyond the physical life. But he couldn't find a way to live the eternal life, even though he asked this kind of question several times. There, there would have been no way to find at this land, which, which idols are all over the world. But Paul and Silas looked different. They had enough chance to go through the open door in darkness, but they didn't. They seemed to be different. They seemed to have the answer which the jailer had in his mind for a long time. So it's not about thanksgiving, not about question about an odd happening, not about his rude attitude. He just asked about salvation. What must they do to be saved? Paul and Silas give him an answer as soon as the jailer asks. Believe in the Lord Christ, Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Paul and Silas gave him the gospel. And the jailer who, uh, who has heard the gospel shared the good news with his household. And you know, he became the first member of Philippi Church. If he's not been living asking, what must I do to be saved, something like that, he would have lost the chance to hear the good news at this unexpected and embarrassing situation. Paul, who was talking about the gospel to him, wasn't a citizen of Philippi, living in Philippi of uh, continental Europe. Paul was a minister of the Antioch church in Cilicia of continental Asia. When he left from Antioch of Cilicia for a second mission trip, his destination was in Philippi of continental Europe. He had never thought that he would go through from Europe to Asia. He had a plan to go to Turkey to spread the gospel at the time. But God had a plan, so he blocked Paul's way sometimes, or made him detour, and eventually made him reach to Philippi, about 2,000 kilometers away. And one night, God caused him to be in the jail. What is, this, what is the reason for that? I believe that God had heard the man's asking, that what must I do to be saved? So he has sent Paul and Silas to give him an answer. Only a person who asks can have an answer. Only a person who asks deeply can have a deep answer. God mobilized Paul and Silas from Asia to give the answer to the jailer, who had been asking that, what must I do to be saved? If he didn't leave with this question, he couldn't have the answer. It's the same reason that Paul and Silas didn't escape and sat there even though the doors opened and the chains fell off the night in the night. After Pentecost, many people were saved, so many apostles were put in jail. Acts 5 verses 17 to 20 tells a story. The high priest and his officials, who were seducers, were killed with, uh, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostle and put them in the public jail. But an angel of the Lord came at night, opened the, opened the gates of the jail, and brought them out. Then he told them, go to the temple and give the gospel this message of life. An angel of the Lord showed up in front of the apostles in jail in the night. 
and the angel didn't dis disappear after making doors open. The angel led them out of the jail. It was to claim the gospel of God outside. Peter's situation was the same. When Peter was put into jail in Jerusalem, he was sleeping deeply. An angel of the Lord woke him up, and the chains fell off his wrist. It's in Acts 12, 8 to 10. Then, then the angel told him, Get dressed and put on your sandals. And he did. Now put on your coat and follow me. The angel ordered. So Peter left the cell, following the angel. But all the time, he thought it was a vision. He didn't realize it was actual, actually happening. They passed the first and second guard part and came to the iron gate leading to the city. And, they, and this opened for them all by itself. So they passed through and started walking down the street. And then the angel suddenly left him. As you see, an angel of the Lord woke him up and led him out because there was a thing Peter had to do. But Paul and Silas, Silas' cases were different. God opened the door and cut off the chains of their feet, but he didn't lead him lead them out of the jail. Doors opened and chains off, but that's it. I assume that they must have prayed, asking what to do next. The situation is perfect to go out, but God says nothing. It's because God wanted to give the answer to the jailer, who had been living with the question that what must I do to be saved? Through Paul and Silas. The famous temple in Jerusalem was built by Solomon. He concentrated national power and devoted himself to build this. But he couldn't get rid of this question. Let's look at 1 Kings 8.27. But will God really live on earth? Why? Even the highest heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built. It means that Solomon asked that even though the temple Solomon had built was huge and awesome for people, but it would be so tiny, just like dust for God. Then how God can live in there? And God answered no to this question. And with this answer, Solomon offered the temple as a place where Israel people worship and meet God. But as time went by, the people of Israel didn't ask, where does God dwell? God doesn't answer. Who don't ask? So the people of Israel just kept God, who is greater than the universe, in the temple which is smaller than the dust. And they idolized the temple itself. And then their faith collapsed when the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed. Besides, they didn't ask questions like who God is, what God has done for them, and how God works. Instead, they just lived getting used to religious custom, and eventually, to kill Jesus without knowing who he was. A person who asks can have an answer. And you can get deep answer as much as you, uh, as much as deep and earnest question you have. God is alive. So he, he answers when you ask something to live as a spiritual Christian. God answers when you ask to be saved. What question would you like to ask God? Is it for your spiritual growth and depth? If our questions are about things that rot and disappear someday, then the answers we receive will be limited and incomplete. However, 
if we ask about eternal and complete things from heaven, God will hear and give his answers to us in various ways. One day, if my son asked about a life seriously, I would try to my best to answer faithfully as much as I can. In the same way, if you ask something deep and worthwhile to God, our Lord God will give you an answer with His perfect and eternal wisdom. So, what are you going to ask to God today? Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your love and grace. We believe you are here with us and give us your wisdom. So we pray that you may help us to think and ask about heavenly things, spiritual things, so that we can get an answer from you. Lord, help us to seek you and help us to seek your way and your face and your glory. We believe you hear and answer when you ask, because you are a father. Please lead us in the way you planned, and lead us to be people you want. We love you, Lord. We glorify your name. In beautiful Jesus' name.